Okay, hey, good evening or bonsoir, mes amis. Uh, we are continuing our Paris week here on Adventures with Sarah. And uh, to make sure that it's a fun week, we have our expert on all things Paris, my dear friend Trish Feaster. Bonsoir. Bonsoir, mon ami, ça va? <laughs> ça va bien. Uh, so, what are we up to tonight in the kitchen for this? It's cucina quarantena, but what do we call it in French? I don't know actually. Uh, cuisine quarantine. <laughs> there we go. Okay, very, very similar. I'm, I'm coming out of frame because I um, have this little pop up that went up there. So I'm just going to come on back. You'll notice that I'm not actually in a kitchen. So, can I call it dining room quarantine? Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, I am in my kitchen with a very noisy cat, and my son is sous chef. So, if you hear rattling in the background, it's my annoying baby cat. Uh, so we're going to start tonight by making crepes, and we're both going to make um, some crepe batter, and we're going to fix crepes in a couple of different ways. Uh, I've changed direction a little bit because I didn't go to the store today, so we're going to have an Italian style crepe. Um, but here in lovely calligraphy, courtesy of Luca, is our recipe. Uh, so for our crepe batter, it's one cup of uh, all-purpose flour, two eggs, a half a cup of milk and water. Uh, a quarter teaspoon of salt and two tablespoons of melted butter. So I'm gonna put that into my Vitamix and get this party started. So tell me Trish, what is your strategy today? Did you already make your batter? I did, I made my batter earlier so I could let it sit in the fridge for a little bit. I had so much going on. So I have two batters um, because traditionally uh, when you have the savory crepe, as Sarah said, you would make it with a buck buckwheat flour batter. Uh, and that's called a galette, G-A-L-E-T-T-E. -T -T -E. And in that, as she mentioned as well, you can put virtually anything you want. Now, a traditional one might have some cheese. It might have Emmental, which is basically Swiss cheese or Gruyere. You would have some French ham in there, but you could do with any kind of ham, essentially. And then an egg. And then you just kind of fold it up, not into a half circle or a semicircle, but you would fold it into a little square. What I'm going to be doing tonight, um, I'm not doing traditional, but I am having, I am gonna have a couple of different things. I have some shredded chicken, my leftovers. I had some rotisserie chicken last night that I made. So I'm just gonna make do with that. I also have some fresh baby spinach. So I'll be putting that in too. For my cheese, I have, well, first of all, I have a cheese plate because we did it, we had intended to call this, what was it? Crepes, wine, and cheese? Yeah, where's the wine? Our night tonight, Sarah? Where's the wine, sister? That's my question. I'm not sure I can hear her, but yes, it was intended to be crepes, wine, and cheese. And so I have my, I'll, I'll talk about my beverages in just a minute, but for my cheese plate, just for myself, I have three different soft cheeses. And I know that might be a little bit difficult for everybody to see. Uh, but this one over here is basically goes from um, the mildest to the strongest. And on this side of your screen, I've got a Grand Margot Brie, uh, which is nice and creamy and even a little bit more creamier than that, a triple cream. Uh, this is a Delice de Bourgogne and it has a little bit more funk than a Brie, which I totally dig. And then the funkiest of them all for tonight, um, this is a blue cheese and it's not Roquefort, uh, which is the one that many of you might know, but you know that there are all different kinds of cheeses depending on where they're made, what bacteria it, it goes into it. And this one is a blue Dauvin. So those are the three that I have. Oh, no, no, no. This one is a Santa Gour. Sorry, my mistake. This one's a little bit creamier. And then for my crepe, I do have the blue Dauvin because that's what I had left because those are the remnants of all the cheeses that I had from the other day, which was cheese, National Cheese Lovers Day. And I celebrated. So this is what's left over. So that's a nice All thing right, that's when you're making any of your crepes. It is basically, what do you have left in the fridge or in the pantry, throw it in there. You can make a savory galette, you can make your sweet crepe. It's super duper easy. Yeah, and because I am practical and lazy and I didn't get to the store to get this. I'm not sure I can hear you. I don't know if that's my AirPods or if that's, I don't know. I think people can hear me. Luca, go check on you. Luca, can you go look on online? Um, I can hear you. So, 
um, the, the thing I'm doing, which is different than what Trish is doing, is that I'm just going to use the straight up crepe uh, batter. And actually, I always do that. I don't actually make the buckwheat crepe batter. Um, so what I like to do when I'm doing that is that I just make the simple one and it, it works fine. So in that few minutes when Trish was talking about wine and cheese, I made the batter in the Vitamix and I'm simply going to take it like this and pour it onto the pan. Can you hear me now, Trish? I can't hear you. So what I'm going to do, Sarah, and I'm just like reading your lips as we go right now, is I'm going to check my computer. You do your thing. I'm going to check mine and kind of disable this stuff because it's just not quite working out. But that's what Yeah, I'm we were having today. trouble with your AirPods the other day as well. Okay. So um, I just followed that recipe that Luca um, put together that we showed. And while uh, Trish goes and deals with sound, I'm going to open up a little bottle of French wine because what is cooking French food without a glass of wine? So I've chosen a Bordeaux. Now, a lot of you probably know more about French wine than I do, uh, but what I do know about French wine is that it's very complicated. Well, to an extent, there is cru, grand cru, uh, there's all these different domains. Uh, I just look for one word and that's Bordeaux because I like Bordeaux. I know it's kind of, I don't know, unimaginative, but Bordeaux is typically a wine that reminds me a little bit of a Merlot, um, it's really just pleasing. It's drinkable. It's never surprising. So I buy this, uh, any kind of Bordeaux. This one here is, um, was probably about $10 and it, it'll bring a little bit of France to our house tonight. Everything okay with that? Well, I think that you're valid though in doing the Italian stuff anyways, because if you think about the changing political borders that happened over centuries and centuries, I mean, France was Italy. Italy was France. It's all yeah. one and the same. And you have those cultures that intermingle. And why not take the flavors of someplace else and make a kind of fusion type of thing? You know, it's just about being innovative and, again, making do with what you've got. Drinking from the bottle. Of course. I mean, come on. It's been a long day. <laughs> so what I've got um, is I've got it here. And that's actually a really big pour for anybody. Because normally it should be in a smaller glass. You know, what are you doing, sister? You're going to be on the floor by the end of this. I know. Oh, well, hey, by the way, people, we need to point out to people that we are channeling our French style today. I've got on my French stripes, a la Petit Bateau, and I've got the red, the bright red lips. And Trish, you are joining me with the bright red lips, aren't you? Yes, I am. Yes. So we are Trey French. Um, <laughs> I'm just going to speak we, really loud to French all evening. Tonight, sister. <laughs> Can, will you please pour me a glass of wine luca will come and speak french to you guys he's better at it than i am okay can i can i explain really quick though about the kier yeah please some people might not know about this um this is kind of my go-to drink normally it's an aperitif right it's supposed to be a before dinner drink you just kind of wet your appetite salivates the glands get you going get you ready to eat your thing this i will nurse all night probably and what it is, it's dry white wine. Normally you would use an aligoté or a Chablis, but whatever dry white wine you can find, that works. And then the, the traditional way to make it is with a liqueur called creme de cassis. This is um, one that I brought home from the Burgundy region. And um, normally you would put this in as, as much or as little as you want. Some people just put a splash, some people do adjust it by according to the color that it turns out to be. And then I actually have four other flavors of liqueur. So here I've got these, are my, my, my little vials. I've got fraise, which is strawberry, mûr, which is what's in my glass right now, and that is blackberry, peche, peach, and framboise, which is raspberry. So there's all different kinds of options that you can do. Again, the traditional is black currant or cassis, but tonight I'm doing blackberry. I'm jealous, man. Uh, I wish I had some, some creme de cassis. I did get some. I had some from Bone for many, many years and slowly use it. You can actually buy that. If you buy the creme de cassis, it lasts for like two or three years if you put it in your fridge. I'm telling you, this is good. Oh, stop. You're making me jealous. My Bordeaux is just fine. Well, cheers. Ready? Salut. Santé. Santé. A votre santé. Mmm. Yeah, that's okay. I just don't have the nice cheeses that you have. Well, let's go ahead and get started with the, um, the crepes. 
So I have a special pan. I don't know what kind of pan you have. I think you have a, a regular skillet. I, this yeah, is, I, have a regular skillet. I do have that one. And then I have the, the totally cheap out version or like the cheater version, um, which you can find online. It's an electric crepe thingy. And you actually just take the pan and you dip it into the batter and then flip it back over. And then it just cooks on there. It's very odd, but it works. Huh. But that was too cheater for me tonight. That is a little bit cheater. What you really need is the thing that looks like a, a, a record player that they make them on in France with a little wooden kind of thing, little trowel. This is a crepe pan that my mom bought for me. I try not to use it for anything other than crepes or other delicate things so it doesn't ruin the finish, but I'm sure it wasn't more than 30 or 40 bucks. It's not an expensive pan, but you may say, I don't need a pan to make crepes. Yes, you're right. You can use any nonstick pan you have. What's nice about actually buying a crepe pan, if you make them more often, is look at the diameter you can get with this, which is so much better than the diameter that you can get. And it's consistent too, because most saute pans or frying pans, the, the edges curve up like that. So you're not gonna get a consistent uh, thickness. So that's why I use this. And so shall we, allons-y? Yep. Okay. I just forgot that uh, I left my salt in the kitchen, which I need that for a little bit for my spinach. So I'm gonna grab that as you're cooking. All right, so I'm gonna angle this down onto my stove here. So um, the other thing you can do if you are wor working with crepes is get an offset spatula. It, probably not great that it's metal because I don't want to scrape the finish, but this is what I use to flip uh, crepes over. So the first thing you're going to want to do is very generously butter your pan, like really, really, really generously butter your pan. The first one will probably turn out a little too buttery in my experience, but that's okay. And really the thing about crepes is just to get in the groove, isn't it? Like you make, I actually made a double recipe. So I'm just going to make as many crepes as this batter can do. And then get this, Trish, I'm going to have breakfast crepes. Oh, yum. Yeah. So um, I'm just going to do this and then I'll put them in the fridge at the end of the night. And then tomorrow I'll just heat, reheat them in a pan real quickly and put some fresh fruit in them. I was trying to be all cool, like to swirl my butter in both pans. That didn't happen. <laughs> You're cool anyway. You're always cool to me. <laughs> it's really awkward because, as, and like I said, you know, I'm not in my kitchen. Our kitchen is so, so tiny. I love our house, but yeah. it's basically from 1987 with all yeah. the original stuff um, and one functional burner. So it was not just not going to happen in the kitchen tonight. So I'm making do with my little electric burners um, that are really too small and it's very awkward. So. Yeah. I want to do just a quick shout out to my friend uh, Linda Gass who sent me a Trader Joe's gift certificate for Christmas. Salut, uh, Sante, thank you so much for the nice little bottle of wine. <laughs> Anybody who sends me Trader Joe's gift certificates, just FYI, I spend it on wine and cheese. So, you know, quality of life. You know, I'm more creative for you guys when you send me wine and cheese. So but have you have you ever tried the um, the the mochi? The fried mochi, like the the uh, like mochi crackers. No. Oh my god. You're Are they good? Out. They're so good. Yeah, we, we, I've got a bit of a Trader Joe's problem in general. So, um, that was the one place that Andrew wanted to go when he visited. That was like our first place that we went. He wanted to go to Trader Joe's. All right, I think this looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a shot. So the amount that you wanna put in kind of depends on you. I eyeball it, I'm just gonna pour the batter in and you want it to be about mm, a 16th of an inch thick, maybe real thin, as thin as you can. But the trick and the nice thing about the crepe pan is you're gonna pour it right in the middle. There's even like a, a spot in the middle. I just pour it right on the spot and then swirl the pan around so then it, it can go all over the place. And that means the consistency of your batter is important. You need to make sure it's runny enough. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Mine is not, I'm realizing. I didn't test it beforehand. So this is gonna be kind of sad. That's all right. <laughs> we might both be having a sad, a sad crate moment. It's okay. It's all right. See, mine needs to go more to the edges, so. All right. 
So this first one is they all the first one always turns out weird because there's a little too much melted butter on it, but I that's totally normal. I like to make it as big as the pan will allow because you end up folding it in quarters and all. So okay, so if you can kind of see, I'm swirling it around, making sure the batter goes absolutely everywhere. You know what I'm so excited about, Trish? Mm. I cannot wait for you and me and the kids to be in Paris this summer doing the Paris tour and going out for actual crepes. Maybe a, what is that place called? Fem, Framboise? That's a pretty good Framboise, place. Yeah, over by the Eiffel Tower. Well, by the Champ de Mars, yeah. There's also one by the Louvre. It's pretty good, too. Oh, that's right. There is one over there. I forgot about Yeah, that. there's a Framboise over there. So here's the genius of the offset spatula, right? So my batter is still runny. So I'm just going to take my offset spatula and use it to spread the crepe batter. Okay. It ain't pretty, but it works. I'm super duper sad. The other thing you and I are going to do is we're going to take a bottle of wine out to the Champ de Mar one night. And the other thing we're going to do is go out for steak frites. So you got to start thinking about what are we going to go to that famous, what's the famous one? Steak frites. Oh, on the Champs Elysees? Yeah. God, brain function, please help me. Nigella Lawson goes there all the time. Yeah, I want to go out to the famous place for steak frites. And that's all they serve. It's the place that only serves that. Oh my God, this is the most embarrassing crepe I've ever made in my life. <laughs> Galette, excuse me, Galette. Well, that's the fun thing about doing things live is that they never turn out the way you expect. So that's okay. Just have another sip of cure, and I'm sure it'll look like a lot better crepe that way. Don't you think? Yeah, and I did, by the way. All right. So I'm keeping an eye on comments, you guys. So if you have any questions or comments or advice on the better way, if you have better technique for making crepes, uh, go ahead and jump in. What I love about crepes is that you really can just have fun with it and throw anything you want. My favorite crepe ever, actually, I had in the Pike Place Market in Seattle when I was an architect working downtown. There was a little crepe shop in the Pike Place Market, and I go down there for lunch at least once a week, and they had probably 20 different kinds of crepes. And my favorite one was tomato, basil, and mozzarella with like an aioli on it. So you don't have to stick to the, you know, ham and cheese kind of thing. Just whatever is turning in your fridge, that's what you can fill it with. Okay, so this is perfect. Flippity flop. All right, so now once I flipped it over the first time, now is the time to put on the toppings. So my first topping that I'm doing is burrata, which is another Trader Joe's find, obviously. So I'm gonna flop that on there. And that's nice and somewhat melty to start with, which is good. I'm gonna kind of put stuff in a corner because I'm gonna fold it the traditional French way. So I'm gonna kind of localize my toppings to one corner. And then the other thing I'm adding is prosciutto, which by the way, found really good prosciutto at Costco recently. Did you? Oh, yeah. I Actually, I saw that the other day too, so I was just there. Yeah, they have like an antipasto pack that's got uh, salami, peppered salami, and actually pretty decent prosciutto. It's a little bit thicker and stickier than I like, but that's okay. Oh my so, God, I have to scrap this one. That's okay. No, it's all right. I know. And that's the thing, too, is that when you are making crepes, you like, I think Sarah said it earlier, you kind of have to plan on the first one or two are going to not be great. They're a disaster, yeah. They are, but this is really, really bad. I'm going to dump this one. I decided that the prosciutto and burrata crepe needs to have some green onions in it. So I'm just chopping up some scallions real quick. If you want to watch just a few little scallions. And then I'll put a little bit of salt and pepper and we'll call it a day. Okay, it's nice and sizzly. My dog thinks it smells good, which is nice. How's that? My dog, Lucky, thinks it smells good. Well, it does. I'm sure it does. This smells fantastic. Okay, so this is the more like properly French thing to do with these is to flip it over like a sandwich, right? And then I'm gonna turn down the heel a little bit. I'm gonna flip it again over itself. One, two, three, flop. Well, it broke, but it's still pretty close, I think. And I have a feeling it's gonna taste good no matter what. 
the crepe place. Oh, somebody's asking about the crepe place, place by the loop. It's called Framboise. It's like a chain. It's not actually my favorite crepe place. My favorite crepe place is over uh, by the uh, Metro stop at Grinnell. There is a, um, a Breton place that makes these wonderful crepes and they serve you cider and a salad. It's like a set meal. It's right at the Grinnell Metro stop and it's really inexpensive. It's not like in the Shishi district. It's more of a kind of uh, everyday people. District. So well, my crepe is ready. Of the cider though. Because I grew up that too. I have my here, but I also put myself cider. And the in the Breton way, you normally drink it out of a bowl. But I didn't have like the right size bowl. So I have this like little serving dish bowl. But I do have my cider in here. And that goes great with the galette. Look at how pretty yours is. Yeah. The cider that they serve at this place over by um, Grinnell, right underneath the metro, yeah, they serve it in the bowls, which is really fun. The other really great place to go to is over by Montparnasse. There are a ton of them there. Yeah, there are. Oh. But that was also because that railway line coming in from Montparnasse yeah. was essentially the main railway line coming in from Brittany. And so when they would come from that region, I mean, you know, way back in the day, they ended up settling in that same area. So that's why you have a lot of those preppery there, traditional ones. I had absolutely no idea about that. I've just always noticed that there's a lot of Breton places in Montparnasse. I've just never even thought, maybe there's a reason for that. So thank and you. Issues. Great information. And uh, somebody just wanted to, somebody mentioned in the comments that we were very brave to cook something so difficult on air. So, you know, cheers. <laughs> Here, here's the thing is that once you get the hang of it, it's fine. Like if you get in the rhythm of it, it's, it's all fine. But I'm just going to be very upfront with everybody that these are, mine I think are going to turn out not so great. And I'm okay with that. Yeah, I think my commentary on my particular formula is that my batter could be slightly thinner, but not much, but just a tiny bit thinner. It might be nice. Yeah, I switched to my um, regular crepe batter instead of the buckwheat because that my buckwheat one was way too thick. Yeah, so I don't really like working with the buckwheat and I don't even really care for the flavor. So for me, yeah, uh, my stove is going to be covered in crepe. Yes, Luca, would you like to participate? Uh, just a little comment about the um, uh, being thankful for making uh, something so hard on air. Crepes are about as hard as pancakes. Like, no, I, they're harder than pancakes. No, they're just. I think they're just as. I, I will stand by that. That they are just as uh, just as easy as pancakes. Because the thing is that you can make these with a whisk. Mm -hmm. You don't have to use a, a a mixer that has like blitz or goes fast or whatever. And then, oh, this, I think this makes it way easier to just do it in the, in the blender. But then you have more dishes. Well, you have the same amount of dishes. Yeah, but this is harder dishes. to clean. Okay. The, but it, it's, all you have to okay. do is put it in the, here, I'll, I'll make the next one to demonstrate just how you're easy making, it is. No, you're going to make this one. So wait till, you have to wait till the top, it's a little bubbly, and the top is not tacky anymore. And then you're going to go carefully under the middle and then flip the whole thing without ripping it. Do you think you can do that? We should probably have another one of these spatulas. No, because those are sticky. You want to use this one that's metal because it's slick and it won't get the silicon ones will get stuck on it on the underside. Okay, so just go ahead, go ahead, careful not to rip it. Okay, yeah, now go straight through the middle. There you go. And then just real gently but quickly flop it up and over. Ready? I'm gonna stop. I typically I'm use two back. spatulas for this. It's but... okay. Okay, well, that was a little aggressive, yeah. but. Luca, do you um, remember when we were in Vietnam? Um, what is it now, three years ago? Oh gosh. Was it three long. years ago? Yeah, and do you remember when they were making the steamed rice um, paper flake thing? Oh and yeah. You with that? Yeah. Very do you remember how you had to roll underneath it and then you unrolled it again? That was. Cool. Ex that was <laughs> that was something. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> oh, it was the same place that had the snake wine, wasn't it? Yeah, that is where we had the snake wine. Mm, snake wine. Yes, I let my fourteen-year-old drink snake wine. I only drink drink the regular wine. I didn't drink the snake. Wine. Oh, only the regular wine. Okay. That one was bad. That one was bad. It's okay, but you know what we're gonna do. So this is my strategy when we have a failure like this. You can't really make a savory crepe out of this one. So. What we're going to do is we're going to make my favorite sweet crepe out of it. 
So why don't you grab uh, a plate? Because uh, sweet crepes, who cares if they're pretty? They're just, and actually in the Dolomites, have you ever um, had Kaiser Schmarrn? You had Kaiser Schmarrn, right? I love Kaiser Schmarrn. We should totally make that sometime. I love right Kaiser Schmarrn. Now. Just whip it up, just go. <laughs> Yeah, I know. So Kaiser Schmarrn is, it's the Kaiser's mess and it was made in the Austro-Hungarian Empire uh, and they, they still make it in the Dolomites. And what it is, is a crepe that went wrong that a chef turned into just like chopped up crepe pieces, absolutely covered in wonderful powdered sugar and jam. Mm -hmm. And you can eat it as a legitimate main course anywhere in the Dolomites in Italy. You can also get it in Slovenia. So if any of you guys come with me to Slovenia on Open Kitchen on Friday, which we go there, like 40 different vendors come out and there's the king of Kaiser Schmarrn, I can't even pronounce it, but he's like the king in Slovenia and he has, um, he's got a TV show and he's got his, his um, booth set up there and he does it and it's really, really good. Well, there we go. Kaiser Schmarrn is awesome. I love it. I didn't realize you could get it in Ljubljana. So, okay, we have our um, slightly, uh, unconventional crepe. So we're just going to rescue it by putting, this is my favorite sweet crepe, and I know it's really boring, but it, it's so good. So just lemon, quarter of a lemon. We're just going to put the juice all over it. More lemon, the better, in my opinion. And get one of those yummy lemons, like the, the Meyer lemons that have that really super nice flavor. And then boring at all. I like that it's, it's pared down Crepe, right? So it's like very essential. It's it's yeah. basic elements. It's not you're not overpowered by all these other flavors. You're not um, you know blanking blanketing it in heavy syrups or anything like that or sauces. Just, it's, yeah, it's just more. lemon juice and oh, lemon juice and powdered sugar. But the key to making this one yummy is you got to add a dash of salt because lemon and salt goes really well together. And if you were feeling real frisky, you could put a little dash of tequila in there and have it be a Mexican crepe. <laughs> <laughs> it would totally work. All right. Meanwhile, anyway, I'm digging into my, my cheese plate. So I'm having some brie right now. This will be mine. <laughs> actually, actually. All right, we're gonna make another one and can see I, if we can do it. Can I take this one? You may. Okay, okay. okay. So we'll see if we've been teaching correctly because Luke is going to take a stab at it. By the way, do you want to tell everybody what you're doing this summer? Well, I can't tell everybody because I it may not even happen, but I have applied for a um, study abroad trip to Ren. And okay, so here's here's what I found while making crepes is good. Don't do a full pan because you'll never flip it in your life. So make small crepes is good crepes. And small crepes is good crepes. Nice grammar. Small crepes. And then you yeah, spread it around and stuff. Maybe a bit more for this one would have been good. But I mean, like, it's still a crepe. It'll still be good. Yeah, I mean, you know, it all ends up in the belly anyways. So, so it doesn't have to be pretty. The, the other thing that I like about crepes is that it's basically like, what? You need Sorry. a plate, Sorry. a bowl, and a couple of measuring instruments, and that's it. Yeah. It's it's just the easiest things, and I mean, because of you're a little hot there, so you're cooking pretty fast. The and the thing about the crepes is that it's all things that you have in your house. It's butter, flour, water, milk, and am I missing something? I don't even know. Eggs. These oh. are things that you'll always have around your house, and then the toppings are things you'll probably always have around your house as well. Jam lemons, powdered sugar, easy as pie. And then we're easy just, as crepes. Just gonna flip that. All right, what are we putting? Should we do the, the salami on your I, I think that I'd like a sweet crepe. Okay. okay. And so I'm, yeah, I'm gonna just do crepe. Uh, jam? Jam. <laughs> Apparently I cannot pronounce things today. I think it's the power of French. I, I couldn't even put sentences together earlier, Lou. We had that. We had our general meeting for Guys Collective. I didn't even know what was happening. Gotta be COVID. Ask Gotta me a COVID. question. I don't know the answer. Cottage cheese and jam. So oh, what we're yeah. gonna do is put some cottage cheese. Ooh. Yeah. This is gonna taste like a blintz, which I love blintzes, which are essentially crepes anyway. Blintzes are just like 
fried crepes, <laughs> stuffed fried crepes. Okay. So what, what what could make this crepe better than frying it? I mean, you what what are taquitos? They're taco. Uh, they're burritos, they're but fried. Fried burritos, yeah. And I mean, what what are what are uh, French fries? If not mashed potatoes, but fried. Every everything that is okay. good can be made better fried. Most things. Don't All take right. my word on that, please. So we're gonna go and do that same fold. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, but do you, um, have you ever had them so they're like rolled? Sometimes some people roll them. Yeah, some people roll them. Traditionally, I mean, when I do the, the sweet crepes, yeah, I, I generally do it like that. Okay, I'm gonna leave this one on the pan a little bit longer because you can see the cottage cheese is starting to heat up. And that is- Everybody, great. I'm having issues, how's it going? That's, that's truly how easy it is to make a crepe. You get the batter, you pour a bit of it on, and then you're done. You, I'm, I'm sure you could make it with just a regular nonstick pan. That's cheaters crepe, 17 year old's crepe. <laughs> Ooh. All right, we're gonna do an experimental crepe after this because this is we're just having fun. How's how are you coming? No, I'm doing my savory one right now. So I've got I added some roasted potatoes that I made earlier. I'm putting in the, the blue cheese right now. I'm almost done. What are you tossing? She has roasted potatoes in hers. Oh, you know, it'd be really, well, eggs, that's another thing you can put in. But what I'm actually hankering for now is gorgonzola or blue cheese and, and roasted pears. That would be good. Yeah, <laughs> yummy. By the way, all of you guys who are watching, no, thank you. Um, well, you could, you decide. Um, everybody who's watching, I just wanted to let you know what I've been doing today and yesterday. I have decided to go through my archives of all the videos that I've done over the past three, four years, download them, clean them up and upload them to YouTube. So coming actually right now, you could go to my YouTube channel. You can actually start looking through if there's an episode you want to find because you can't really find that on Facebook. It's a really, they're, they don't file things per se. So I have them organized by coffee chat, uh, by Cucina Quarantena, by adventures and by virtual tours. So you can go and you can flip through all the different things and find the video that you are looking for. So that is an ongoing project, but we've made tons of progress. We posted over 150 videos in the past two, three days. So please have a look if you haven't uh, checked out my YouTube channel. And this, by the way, Trish, will be uploaded to my YouTube channel at the end of the day. I mean, I, I think that's awesome because, you know, you have done so much content and it's a nice way to be able to have to, to be able to find it that way easily on YouTube because Facebook isn't all that super helpful with that unless you want to scroll through everything. But I will say that I'm a little bit embarrassed that this one's going to go up there. I mean, <laughs> but you know what, Trish, the reason that we don't do, I don't do like super pro produced videos with like a camera crew. I could, I could hire a camera crew to do this stuff. I tried that. I've done a couple of more like professionally produced videos. They just don't have the same kind of like homey quality. And I think what I find fun is that we screw up and that it's real. Like, I think that's better than any, you know, how many millennial girls are wearing bikinis and jumping off of waterfalls and looking beautiful the whole time. You know, I show out up on the beach with my phone in my blubber sticking out and you know what, that's real. So and yeah, cause I'm so over all of that stuff anyways, you know, like you and I were both almost 50. What? What? Stop for yourself, sister. I'm almost 50. I am. I am not almost 50. What are you talking about? Okay. Well, I am. And um, yeah, I just don't, I can't be bothered with all of that, like Insta glam, do the whatever's and all of that stuff. I just, whatever. It doesn't matter. It just yeah. Well, matter. and so I think my, that there's my ugly galette, which isn't even with oh, buckwheat, but it's, it's really, cool. yeah. And it smells divine. So again, I've got the, I've got a blue cheese in here. I have the blue d'Auvergne and then spinach, shredded cheese, roasted potatoes. That's it. Okay, I have an experimental thing I want to try. So last night I roasted a whole pumpkin from my garden. I had pumpkins and onions from my garden. So I roasted the onion, I roasted the, the pumpkin and I pureed them with garlic and beef broth and coconut milk. And I got myself a wonderful pumpkin soup, which I made last night. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is use the leftovers of the soup, which is kind of congealed as my filling with, with cheese on top. Don't you think that sounds good? Yeah. 
It might be terrible, but I don't care. Let's try it. Well, I'm going to grab a fork because I'm going to eat it. Hey, hey, Luca, don't you think blue cheese might go with the pumpkin? Could be. But this is what's so fun about crepes is that you don't have to follow the rules. Yeah, if you want to make them exactly the way you'd have them in Paris, sure, go ahead. But that's like what Nutella and bananas and you know cheese and ham. It's way more fun to just think up completely new things. So here's my pumpkin soup I made last night. That was excellent, by the way. I'll have to post that recipe somewhere. So the YouTube thing is part of a larger project, which I think I've mentioned to you guys that what we're going to do is uh, we're we're actually transcribing all the Cucina Quarantina episodes as well. So you're going to have a video archive and then Patreon folks are going to have access to all of the recipes written out in human language, not just in Sarah babbling speak. So FYI, yeah, I stopped listening to you because this is so darn good. It's OK, but I I'm definitely I... not as interesting as a crepe. That is for sure. <laughs> oh, my God. I mean, not, but she, so, it doesn't matter if it looks ugly, it still can taste good. Yeah, it still tastes really good. I would because the consistency of my batter is a little bit off, but dang it if it doesn't taste awesome. Oh my. All right, so I've got the pumpkin soup and it's a pumpkin coconut soup on the bottom. Let's go ahead and fold this sucker up and see if we have won or lost the crepe wars here. Let's see. Crepes are a fun thing to do if you ever do Iron Chef. Have you ever done that, Trish? Iron Chef with like your friends, your family? Uh -uh. I love playing Iron Chef. It's so fun. I used to do that with my in-laws. When we, right. we do our kitchen, maybe that'll be a thing. I'm so excited for you to redo your kitchen. <laughs> I am too. It will be so nice to have more than one burner. Yeah. That's why I could never sell my house. There is no kitchen that is as awesome as mine because it's all, you know, my kitchen is all six inches higher than a normal person's kitchen. So it is good. Okay. So pumpkin and cheese crepe. Let's have a, a taste. See, the other thing you can do with a pumpkin soup like that, with that, this soup could be a pasta sauce. You could even repurpose that into pasta sauce. This is all the different ways that you can look like an amazing chef while you're actually just kind of lazy. Or oh, it's really good. Mm. Okay. Luca, you want to come and try this one? Yes, I do. My poor dog is right here on my feet, just looking at me all sad. No, oh, I'm sorry, I can't eat well here. All right. It's hot cha cha here. Maybe. Hot cha cha. That's really good. Uh -huh. Which one is Lou eating? This is really yummy. <laughs> That's really yummy. So there you go. That's basically how we go about making crepes. And uh, I would highly recommend that you just have some fun with this. Make yourself some of that simple batter and just go for it. Whatever's in your fridge, you could saute up some vegetables. That mm -hmm. would have some vegetables that need to be used. What else? What, do you, what are the typical ones, Trish, that you remember seeing in Paris other than cheese and ham and all that? Excuse me while I finish chewing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um. All kinds of different stuff. I mean, you can do just cheese and egg or just cheese. You can do just cheese and ham. You can do ham, cheese, and egg. All different kinds of stuff like that. I love having mushrooms with them. So sometimes you'll find a great place or a galette place <clears throat> and they'll do like the Swiss version, right? Which will tend to have mushrooms or you can have it with the sauteed onions. I've had a quote unquote Mediterranean one, which had roasted eggplant, roasted red, be red bell peppers, um, roasted green bell peppers, uh, sauteed onions, and then something else. I don't remember. That one was- Have you ever been to the crepe place in Besançon at the mall? The crepe place at Besançon? Oh yeah, I have. Yeah. Forever. 
Are they do some them? interesting things there because it's it's just a, a crepe only like fast food kind of joint. Mm -hmm. They use the crepes kind of as like a bowl almost, and they'll put salad in there, <laughs> like all, all kinds of interesting stuff. I have an idea, Nico or <laughs> Luca. Why don't you crack an egg in the middle, make an egg and cheese one? Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, so get a get an egg up. <laughs> that's what they do at the one in best one. I know, open kitchen. Did you have the Kaiser Schmarrn, Denise, when we were there? I don't know if you saw that. Um, I'm just like, I'm glancing through the, the comments because there's some good ideas of what people put in theirs. Mm -hmm. Hey, Barbara, she does gorgonzola and cooked sweet potato. That, that would be really good. Actually, what I would do is a Mexican kind of version. I would do sweet potato and cotija cheese and green chilies. Yum. Bad idea. No, 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 no. I tried to flip it without uh, spatula. Oh, I thought you, oh, here's the spatula. So we've given you a few different ideas. Uh, mm. Hey, Barbara and um, Denise, if you guys have any leftover of your pumpkin seeds or the pumpkin salt that we got, that would be a nice little combo wombo. Just kick it up in this little recipe. The pumpkin seed oil? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have some of that. I haven't figured out what to put it on. I think like a pureed soup would be good. I'm not sure though. Oh, and we, we've done it in a salad too, which was fantastic. And I did that with pears and gorgonzola in the pumpkin oil, and then roasted pumpkin seeds. And then also this pumpkin seed crackle crack thing that, that we got yeah. there. It was fantastic. And then Janet makes hers with chicken and mushrooms in a Parmesan cream sauce. That sounds delicious. So Luca and I are gonna do this one with eggs, which might seem super weird. So I thought we would be the, um, guinea pigs here. I've had this in Paris. I've never made one myself, so it may turn out horribly. So what I know it is it, at its simplest is just cheese with a craft egg in the middle. So go for it, Lou. Look at my handsome baby. Sorry, proud mom. My dog is crying because he can smell how good all of this is. I'm so sorry, Lucky. We had to exile uh, Opal because Opal was being a little bit too uh, she was a little bit too enthusiastic about cooking. Okay, so yeah, so now you're gonna fold it in quarters. Oh, don't try not to break the yolk though. Don't break the yolk, but fold it in quarters. Yeah. Uh oh. <laughs> and then you're gonna leave it on there to kind of cook through. Oh, oh, I see. Yeah, okay. it's not gonna be a raw egg, but you're gonna. Okay, now just leave. Just don't don't push it down. Just leave it. Okay, just leave it. <laughs> okay. 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 There we go. Ooh, this is gonna be good. Actually, we should have put some green onion in there. We should. What can we put what? on? What green onion? Um, oh, maybe the pumpkin seed oil. Maybe that would be good on top of the crepe with just cheese and egg. What do you think? Sorry. Yeah, that would be good. This is what we're talking about. This is a thing that Andrew is obsessed with. It's this pumpkin seed oil that he brings from delicious. Slovenia. Yeah. So. I, we have so you, have, and have you tried the pumpkin seed oil with vanilla ice cream? I have. Yeah, I think I did it at his house. Okay, that yeah. I love, and my my stepkids are addicted to that. Oh, yeah, just taste it. More of that, isn't it? Well, I'm saying, let's put it on the crate. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I feel like we're like mad scientists in the laboratory. Too. Well, I should so. that. So go ahead and do it. Yeah. I didn't try the um, our messy one, so let's let's get to the sweet ones and try it and see if it turned out okay. And it will be good. That one is it just is. This is so good. This is just the lemon with the powdered sugar. That sounds so good. That's what I'm going to do next. Well, I'm mm. without the lemon. I'm just going to actually do beurre sucre, which is butter sugar. Mmm, yum. Somebody's asking what cheeses you're using. So the first one was burrata, which you can get at Trader Joe's. It's an Italian soft cheese from Puglia, um, which you might have seen me eating in Puglia in the fall. Uh, the other one is just a, a bag from Trader Joe's Quattro Formaggio. So who knows? It's mystery cheese. But what I recommend for crepes, you want to get cheeses that have a low melting temperature and make sure that they're shredded ahead of time. So I like ones that are a little bit more like a mozzarella texture. I know the Emmentaler is really like common and Gruyere, and you can use those, but these melt a lot faster. So and then if you do a blue cheese, you know, you just get a really soft, gooey, gooey one. 
And then what they would typically do in Lucky, you're okay. What they would typically do is actually just do little globs of it here and there in the gullet. Like if you do four corners kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay, let's try this. So the little blue cheese goes a long way anyways, flavor wise. I agree. So we're cooking this one just a little bit longer to make sure that our egg on the inside is good. So why don't you get a plate and we'll plate this food. Close the spice cabinet. <laughs> so what Luca was mentioning is that he has applied for a program in um, Rennes in France, in northern France, and hopefully he'll get us. He's applied for a scholarship, so we'll see if he gets it. That's awesome. We can't confirm that he's going to go, but it's a it's a program where he has to speak French. So he has to sign a document that says he swears not to speak French, speak English the entire time he's there. Um, I changed my mind about something since you guys already did the um, the citron, the, the lemon one with the yeah. sugar. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go ahead and do bananas and toasted almonds, which I toasted ahead of time, oh my God. and caramel. And then I have some ice cream in the freezer. I don't know if I'll do that. I don't need it, but it definitely goes really well with it. Like it's I'm going to do the indulgent planet. caramel thing now. Yeah. Look at the colors. I don't know if you can see the colors, but this pumpkin seed oil, um, it's brown when it's concentrated, but then when it drips away, it's green. It's very, it looks like, it's very pretty. It looks like a painting. It looks like the crepe from the planet Mars. You put some salt and pepper on it. La salle. Very good. Can I, can I have a bite? I'm going to cut it in half just so we can make sure. Oh, look, see, there you go. Yes. The egg is cooked. Let's go ahead and do a little tiny bite. Lucky you're okay. Mm. That community oil makes it all my mouth. It's good. It just takes it to a whole other level, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Boo? That's so good. Oh my gosh. No one's expecting that to be gross. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That's so good. So we're making a bunch of different crepes and as we're laying them like on the counter and they're getting cold, just as an FYI, if you make crepes and they get cold, you can just toss them back into the pan and heat them up again. Which is <laughs> what they do in Paris. If you go to some of the quick, Ew. you know, fast food takeaway, what you know, like like you, there's just like a little window, and yeah. you go to those, and you'll see this, see the stack of them. I mean, they still taste fine. Obviously, a fresh made crepe, like you order it, they make it, boom, there you go. That's obviously the best. But yeah. you know, I, I'm not opposed to a quick little walk away lunch, and if that means that they're just reheating the crepe that they made 30 minutes ago. You know, just the crepe itself, not the not the inside stuff. Yeah, sometimes like well, for a cheap one, yeah, exactly. In a nicer one. place, yeah. they should be made fresh. But yeah, if you're just gonna go for like the Euro crepe, it's almost always that they're pre-made. Yeah. It's like it's like Wendy's. They Here, freeze their patties. This one needs to go back. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be yum. Every single one we've made so far is yum, like really yum. I'm going to go back to number one, which was the um, burrata and prosciutto. Let's give that a little sample with the green onions. That's kind of the fun thing about making it yourself because then you can just go back and forth between the savory and the salty. I And I like that when I eat, right? Like I don't necessarily eat in proper order no. because I like, I like counterbalancing once I have the savory, then go to a sweet, then go to a savory, then go to a sweet. Salty sweet kind of gal. Mm. Come on, open. Yes, this one is also quite excellent. Want some of them? Oh my God, that's going to be heavy. That's prosciutto and burrata. Okay, so there's, I don't know if you can see that, but I've got the bananas, the roasted almonds, and then I just squeeze some caramel on that. And I'm going to top it with some more caramel. Oh, I want that. Yeah, you do. Man, why do you live so far away from me? Come over. You've got miles. Fly down. I'll be there in five hours. 
keep it warm. That's the problem with this job is that I don't have any friends who actually live in the city I live in. All of my friends are like in Italy or mm -hmm. Egypt or Thailand or San Diego. Can you see that? Uh -huh. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, you gotta try it and tell us how it is. Okay. So again, you could do this on a mode and add some ice cream to it, but I just can't be bothered right now. It's too far. Have you ever done flambe before? I haven't. I'm afraid to do that. Oh, I <laughs> my eyebrows. Are you kidding me? I, I do treasure my eyebrows. So, yeah. That's that. That's what I should do. I should make a crepe that. Unfortunately, we do not have any of the materials to make a crepe that. So, we do not. Oh, my gosh. I know. That's divine. Winner, yeah. winner, chicken dinner. No, winner, winner, crepe dinner. Yeah, so for those of you who are thinking about uh, following our example here and making some crepes for dinner, um, just a, a thought. So the, the versions I made, I made um, one with mozzarella, the pumpkin soup, basically, and that's basically it. I made one with burrata, prosciutto, and green onion. And then Luca made one that was just cheese and egg with pumpkin seed oil over the top. We did one that was strawberry jam with cottage cheese. We did this one, which is probably the classic best one, which is just lemon juice and powdered sugar and salt. So many different choices. You can have so much fun. But is this enough for dinner? I propose that you should probably, if you're serving this to like a family, you should probably have a salad on the table and a baguette. What do you think? Yeah, absolutely. And then, <laughs> and then for dessert, dessert, because you would, again, you would have had your, your savory crepe, your galette. Yeah. You had your sweet crepe, which is kind of quasi dessert. But any French person worth his ounce of salt would actually have cheese, a cheese plate at the end. A cheese course. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have a brie that I was thinking about making, but what I'd like it to do is warm the brie and put fig jam over the top. Yes. I support that wholeheartedly. Yeah, that would be really good, especially with um, with toasted baguette. So, you know, the thing is that eating well doesn't have to be hard. And I think in the U.S. we have this like feeling somehow that eating good food is for fancy people. Or and it's going to be expensive. Yeah, well, I know. And that's the thing. And that's what the point of all of these Cucina Quarantena episodes is trying to point out and teach everybody that you can eat like Europeans do and it doesn't cost you anything really. I mean, what does it cost to make a crepe? It's probably costs pennies to make a batter. Pennies, yeah. And you can use leftovers, whatever's in, you know, somebody said roasted chicken, whatever you had for, I mean, I had that pumpkin soup for dinner last night and it makes a fabulous crepe. So, you know. Yum. I know, it's so good. I'm so happy right now. And I know, me too. My actual happy place is Paris, but I'm like, right side by side with my happy place right now. Well, we're eating crepes and we're hanging out together and we're talking about when we do go to Paris in June together mm -hmm. and theoretically we're at work. So yeah, <laughs> life is pretty good if you ask me. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, where's my, my hard cider? Here it is, let me drink from my- Do you have a hard cider? Yeah, cause that's the typical Breton way. Oh, man. That's I have that a mic here. I've got all the things. And you are truly French. I'm just faux. Mm. Oh my God, yummies. Oh my gosh, yeah, that one is so good. I'm just curious, do your, um, does your viewership cook while you're doing Cucina Quarantena? We have done cook-alongs before. Okay. So I have done a few where we actually did a, a cook-along where everybody was on screen cooking with me. We should do mm -hmm. that again, that was really fun. Mm. Otherwise, I'm not sure, actually. So somebody's asking what kind of cider you're drinking. So Barbara, I did the cheater thing because I don't have access to a, a Breton hard cider at all. But I will tell you what I got. And it's literally the only thing that they had at Stater Brothers. Um, and what I got was, I don't know if you can see that, Angry Orchard. Oh, no. That's pretty, I mean, it's all right. Oh. Angry Orchard. Stater Brothers. Brothers. Man, Stater Brothers, that's a that's a blast from the past. There was a Stater Brothers up the street from my grandma's house. I haven't heard that phrase in a long time. Oh, surprisingly, not that many calories in this. And no. 
gluten free. I don't know if that helps anybody, but it is. It's naturally gluten free. Somebody says that they just salivate when I cook. So, <laughs> but we have to invent a smell o vision so you can actually smell what I'm cooking. No, I'm actually, last night I, when I was making like that pumpkin. We're like, they oh. have like scratch and sniff cards. Scratch. I know we could just send everybody who follows me scratch and sniff cards so they can sniff along as they watch my videos. That's a good idea. But yeah, it's, I, I love sharing this stuff so much that last night when I was making pumpkin soup, I just was like, oh, why didn't I make this into an episode of Cucina Quarantena? But the kids weren't home. So I had no cameraman, but that's okay. Mm. Well, my dear, I think this has been a glorious success. We've had some yummy, yummy, yummy food. I'm going to make a couple more and feed the rest of the, feed the, the other baby. Uh, and have I'm going to make a nice salad. I have like a kale salad with strawberries to go with it. Mm. Uh, and at least another glass of wine. It's been a long day. I'm going to make, um, well, the kids are actually eating, they're eating Rubio's tonight, but for dessert, I am going to make them crepes. And for the other ones, uh, what they like, I'm doing fresh cut strawberries. I'm going to make a strawberry glaze to go with that one. My husband, Mike, he is a chocoholic. So he's going to have chopped chocolate from... Trader Joe's, Barbara, because I know you're watching. So, you know, we buy that big Belgian brick chocolate that you've got yep. there. We just like do little shavings or cut it up. So I'll put that in there for him. And then Ellie will probably have a mix, you know, a couple of different things. So my true dessert is, is actually not a crepe. My true dessert at night is the Trader Joe's dark chocolate peanut butter cups. I have one of those and a mm -hmm. glass of red wine or a handful of the dark chocolate raisins. Those are so good, man. Yum. Yum. Yeah. Ooh, love right. it with strawberries. You guys are giving us really good ideas. I want like chocolate dipped strawberries now. Will somebody bring me chocolate dipped strawberries, please? I'll be right there. <laughs> Wait, am I, I ha am I a little bit red? Did it do it? Or you can't tell yeah, me? You just look, you just look lively. That's all. Okay. And look at me. I, we were so worried that I was going to be like falling underneath the table because I was so drunk. I'm like, not look, I'm double fisting. You're double fisting it, sister. You better watch out. I hope Mike's around to carry you up to bed. Hmm, not good together. Just so that you know. <laughs> Keep those separate. <laughs> yeah, I think that's good. Also, like prosciutto and strawberry jam, not so much a combination, just FYI. Yeah, any of the sweet stuff with the meat just doesn't, yeah, doesn't work in the crepes, so. All right, so what are we doing tomorrow? Tell me. Tomorrow, we are doing 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central European time, and we are gonna be joined by our colleague, Julian Brown, who is honestly just a walking brain. He is magnificent. I, I have to say, I'm in awe of him. I, every time that I listen to him talk, he's just like riveting. So, mm -hmm. he yeah, he, I mean, the way that he weaves a story and of course his gorgeous accent and the way that he engages with you. And uh, I'm so glad that he has come on board and he's going to be one of our local guides when we're in Paris on our tour. So that's why we have him on tomorrow and we're going to do a little historic talk. So we get to pick his brain, Sarah, all like totally random, obscure things. And, and anybody who's watching, if you want to throw out some questions there, see if you can stump Julian. Ooh, that should be the game. Stump Julian? Okay, ask him questions that you don't think he can answer. I like it. Because he's, I mean, he's really like Wikipedia. I, he's so knowledgeable. Yeah. So I also love Julian because Julian's kind of a, uh, he's, I always call him Jiminy Cricket. He's always the one that's sitting on my shoulder saying, you know, you should think about these other things. So. It's just awesome that way. You guys are going to enjoy that tomorrow. And I will enjoy it too, but I don't even know what to ask Julian. If, I mean, I'm going to feel like an idiot. So no, I mean, like a lot, there are lots of curiosities, right? I mean, anything that, that, that floats through your brain, all kinds of different stuff. I mean, you can ask, you can ask about monocry. <laughs> you do know I love monocry. So, I so what? and wouldn't you like to know more about it? Wouldn't you like to know a little bit about the history and like, I don't know, consumerism in France and all kinds of fun things. Hey, do, have, you don't watch Top 
Gear, do you or the um, the Grand Tour, the new iteration of Top Gear? I've watched in the past, but I wouldn't say that I regularly watch it. They have a new France special out that's funny. You should watch it. Okay. It's hilarious. I mean, it's stupid, but it's really fun. But it gets to something interesting. Like a, the, one of the points they made, I keep thinking about with respect to Paris and France, is that French designers from a you know industrial design architectural point of view, they just don't care. They just have no interest in what other people are doing. They have no interest in functionality. They're just doing the thing they're doing. And it's funny because I've never heard anybody say that, but I've always thought that, especially about French architecture, that it's just such a middle finger to functionality and the architecture profession generally. That's always been my sense of French architecture. It's funny to hear somebody else say it. But isn't that kind of, it's hard to necessarily say that though too, because there's so much architecture, I mean, like even in Paris, that isn't necessarily done by French architects, but they've brought in other architects. I mean, like, for example, the, the Pompidou, right? And I mean, that part of that is some ideas from Renzi Piano. Yeah. So, but, but it is like, it doesn't make sense in that space. I love it, but you're like, huh. That doesn't yep. quite work out well, but there's genius behind it. Yeah, well, Le Corbusier is kind of the, the classic one that it's a fabulous idea, but functionally is always a disaster. So like think about the old mean terminal at Charles de Gaulle. That was just, oh, yeah, it was so oppressive, but it was a cool idea. If you looked at it purely from an architect's standpoint, it was a very cool idea, but yeah, just oppressive. So anyway. I find our French architecture and design is so super like they're just an outlier. Like they never do anything that anybody else would do. It's so easy for me to spot French design because it's so not what anybody else would do. It's just easy. You can see it. You're like, oh, that's French. <laughs> anyway, I was delighted by watching that because it was they kind of put their finger on something I've always felt about French design that I've never been able to kind of like put into words. But, okay, well, I'll definitely start watching that. Yeah, very good. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us today for our little crepe fest here on uh, Adventures with Sarah and the Travel File. And just remember, we are going to be going to Paris this summer, and we would love to have you along. There is space available on our tour. We're about halfway full. We're going to take a maximum of 12 people, so real small group. And then my kiddos are going to join us as well. So it's going to be way too much fun, is my guess, right? Oodles and oodles, beaucoup fun. Boku fun, exactly. So, bye bye. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, what time again? I, you know, I'm starting to feel it. <laughs> I'm going to answer a little slower now. It's 11 a.m. tomorrow. Are you sure? No. Okay. Well, we'll look at the schedule. <laughs> I think that, I mean, I don't know. It's printed. Like we made a thing. We did. We actually made a thing. Yeah. So I'm sure it's, if you look back on my, my post, you'll see it there. So I think we're toast. We had a guide collective meeting this morning, which is always tiring. And we're just like, we've hit the wall. We're toast today. So, all right. Au revoir, my beautiful friend, mon bel ami. <laughs> see, I'm awesome at French. You I know the words. I just don't bother to pronounce them correctly. <laughs> <laughs> A demain. Ah, there, there we go. All right. Thanks for joining us, everybody, tonight. And remember, I am archiving all of these things on my YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube and you can search for Sarah Murdoch, not Adventures with Sarah, just Sarah Murdoch, and I'll come up. You can subscribe and you can keep up because I've got all kinds of really cool archive content that's going to be posted uh, and some new stuff as well going forward. So, merci. À demain. À demain. Merci à toi.